so the goal with this particular segment is to try to give you an overview about driving the Sherp on ice that you barely cannot stay up on top of, and this is a pretty good example of that. Again, on this particular day, it was pretty warm outside. It was about freezing. If you look at the pond right now, you can even see there's water that's on top of the ice. The ice is probably, I don't know, in this area, it's probably about two inches thick, somewhere around there. You can see some of the chunks that kicked up on top of the ice as I broke through it. So you, you noticed I was going forward while I was trying, I think, if I remember right, to turn a little bit to the left. And you really have difficulty steering through the ice because as the shirt breaks through the ice, you're like clearing a path through that ice. And for you to turn, the shirt is longer than it is wide. You can't do it. So you've got to bust up one of the sides of that channel that you're creating on that ice in order to steer in a different direction. And, I, and I've said this before, but you know, there's only one person in the Sherp, and that's me right now. The Sherp is extremely well balanced, so if you don't have the load perfectly balanced from left to right or from driver to passenger side, it's going to go in a direction that you might not intend it to go. Again, because it's so balanced. And it is pretty light, too, when you really think about it, um, for how big it is. So there I was able to turn finally, get a little bit different direction, starting to go over by that tree. Uh, the water here is, again, fairly shallow. This particular section, when the pond is actually at its normal depth, that would be land right now. So right there, it's about, I would guess, a foot deep. You can see as I'm spinning on there, when, when the water is like black, I'm hitting or I'm very close to the bottom. I'm not touching the bottom here. The bottom of this pond is like this silt. So if you'd step in that, you're gonna go in like muck up to your knee, uh, somewhere around that. Um, again, this is just an old farm pond that's been here for years and much better practices now than what there was years ago, but all the water runoff that was coming from the fields ended up down here. Uh, not only the water runoff, but also, you know, manure and other things that would be out there. So one of kind of the neat sounds is when you're inside of the shirt, is you're going through and you have those chunks of ice. And it, well, it's kind of a, not necessarily neat, but... Uh, an interesting sound is is that those ice chunks are hitting the bottom of the shirt. Um, but again, that is that Swedish steel that's on the bottom. It's fairly strong. It'll take a beating. You just got to take your time. So you're kind of seeing that right now in the back tire. So that mucky, silky stuff that I was talking about, it starts to get in the treads of the tires. And when it gets too stuck in that, they can no longer act like paddles. And they basically just spin there. This isn't the most severe type of terrain like that that I've been in. Um, some places where water, like a small little creek, is flowing into like a river, uh, a lot of silt settles there and that's where that stuff kind of grows. Or other areas, if it's really, really shallow vegetation um, and everything's kind of been rotting in there forever, uh, that stuff becomes very sticky and it'll stick to the tires and not allow those paddles to work the way that they're supposed to. So as you can see, as I'm breaking up the ice, you know, then I'm more maneuverable and I can move around. You know, you've had some people that say, oh, the darn thing goes so slow on the ice. Well, you're when you're breaking through, you're exactly right. It does go very slow through it. But uh, I'm going through it, and there isn't too many vehicles that I'm aware of in the world that uh, can actually do what this thing does. So when you do try to actually go up on the ice, and the ice is thick enough, which this is not, you'll kind of notice the front end will pop up in the air once in a while. Um, and you can go up backwards on top of the ice too. But when you're popping up on the ice, the first half thing that happens is that the front tires get on the very top of it. 
and then the back ones are trying to grip uh, to catch up on top of there too. But most of the time uh, when you're doing that, uh, uh, I say this, it uh, you're going so fast, it just takes a little while. Um, you got about 60 millimeters of mercury of air pressure inside of the tires when you're doing that. So that's, you know, less than probably one PSI. Um, and you're in second gear, basically punching it. If you just go slow, it doesn't do anything. It just kind of like, like paws at it like a little kitten does at a little toy. So it, it doesn't really do anything. Second gear, 60 PSI, patience. You'll get back on the ice if the ice is thick enough. So that's about all that I wanted to show on this particular video. We'll have some more in this series coming up here. Really appreciate all the new subscribers. I hope you like these videos. Uh, take care.